My name is Michael Hoke. I'm the owner of a company called Aberis Training, and our main location is out in Reno, Nevada. And we've been in business for 35 years doing training courses revolving around composite materials. Um, most of our courses are hands-on, uh, although we do have a, a set of six engineering courses that are very mathematical in nature. And we have uh, over 20 courses altogether. And uh, most of them are aimed at the aerospace industry because that's where most of the demand has been. And we work primarily in carbon fiber structures, although we do a good deal of training with fiberglass and Kevlar and other materials as well. So aerospace has been our mainstay ever since we got started. But lately, um, lately meaning in the last decade, really, we've started getting more and more interest from automotive and uh, other industries like wind turbine and sporting goods and, uh, you know, uh, like the snowboards we all just got to see at the Olympics. Uh, in fact, Hal Burton of Burton Snowboards came and took our classes in the late 1980s. He took every class we had at the time, which is only four, and went out and started Burton Snowboards after that. So uh, uh, that's worked out pretty well for him. And um, so in addition to automotive and, and wind turbine and sporting goods, we're getting folks doing things like medical prosthetics and um, uh, some uh, work on the, the, the drones, which have become you know very, very popular, but not what we get are not the small handheld drones. They're the big military drones, uh, like the Predator and the Reaper and the Global Hawk and things like that. The drone industry has gone from nothing 10 years ago to a big part of our business. now. So that's what we do. Um, on the automotive side, we've been mostly concentrating on carbon fiber and mostly for, you know, the, the high-end, like Lamborghini sent a large number of people here from Italy over several different uh, periods of time. Uh, the Formula One teams have sent people here. Uh, repeatedly. Um, so, you know, vehicles at, at that level, but as you all know, that technology is rapidly spilling down into cars that actual human beings can afford. Uh, the Alfa Romeo 4C, for example, is still not a cheap car, but it's the starting price is about $60,000. It's not like a Lamborghini or something. So, um, and we have two Alfa 4C tubs here that we teach uh, repair with. So, uh, we're we're seeing the automotive industry uh, increase pretty rapidly on the use of these materials. So that's the basics of our background. Excellent. Okay. Well, we, we certainly appreciate your time today, and uh, we appreciate that all that you and your organization has done for ICAR. Um, we work very closely with Mike on the uh, on the ICAR introduction to carbon fiber course, and uh, we actually recognized him with our Robert Offer Smith ICAR Texture Award a couple of years ago for all of his. Uh, outstanding yep. contribution. So thank you for that. And again, congratulations for that, that award. Uh, very, yeah, it means a lot to us here at the Tech Center. Thank you. And we have that proudly displayed in our front office. Everybody sees it when they walk in. So Wonderful. Well, Mike, there's no question that the proliferation of advanced and complex materials uh, will continue. Uh, what excites you the most about this trends and what are some things that maybe keep you up at night? Well, um, as far as the trends go on the automotive side, uh, I'm not sure how to phrase this. The automotive industry is really running the advances in, for the entire composites industry, including aerospace these days. They're doing so much work so fast to advance the technology in the automotive side and primarily in making things less expensive and quicker. Uh, and the aerospace composites, it's like for Boeing and Airbus and whatever that we work with every day. Uh, when you go make a carbon fiber part, the epoxy resin systems we use typically have cure cycles of anywhere from four to eight hours and involving an autoclave, you know, a high pressure oven. And the automotive business, you start talking to them about even four hour cure cycles, they just laugh at you. You know, they think two minutes is a long time to make a part. And so they've been doing a huge amount of really innovative work in things that are now kind of collectively called snap cure resin systems. Uh, resins that cure really quickly on the order of a minute or two, perhaps. And um, the aerospace industry is starting to pick up on that because it helps their production side as well. Autoclave time is, for a big autoclave, it's cost many thousands of dollars an hour just to run the thing. So if they can cure parts more quickly and they get many more parts per shift through the autoclave, it saves them a lot of money. So the aerospace industry led the technology for decades, and now it's the other way around. The automotive industry is leading it. 
And that's probably the biggest single change that I've, I've seen. It's really nice. It's very interesting. So it's what, worked, what, what, what keeps me up at night? <laughs> well, I, I'm not sure that anything does related to composites right now. <laughs> as we, as, as, uh, uh, as they become more widespread, and we're starting to see them in cars that cost reasonable amounts of money, uh, and therefore that translates to lots of those cars out there. There's certainly going to be more cars involved in, in accidents and collisions that need repair. And the lack of trained repair technicians is probably the, the single biggest downside I can see. It's not like it's urgent. It has to be solved tomorrow. We've got time, but we really need to work on that. The, the, uh, especially if you've, got a, you know, if you've got a car in San Francisco or Los Angeles or, or Atlanta or Miami, you can probably find somebody to fix it if it's a carbon fiber structure. But if you're in, uh, you know, much smaller cities in the Midwest, or even if you're in Reno, Nevada, where I am, you're not going to find anybody around here that can that can do that kind of work. And so that, to me, is causing probably causing the insurance companies to write off cars that they otherwise can fairly easily uh, keep, and um, and that drives the cost up for everybody for insurance. So uh, I think that's probably the biggest hole in the technology we see right now. And of course, you iCar guys are all over that. That's that's clearly uh, right up your alley. Okay, well, what excites me most is about the uh, continued opportunities that we have. So with more challenges in the industry brings more opportunities. We've been collaborating with automakers for many years, and this has been a very successful collaboration, and it gives us a, an opportunity to deliver more performance, more light weighting, uh, and other key attributes to automakers to help them meet their needs. In terms of uh, what keeps me up at night, it's mostly centered around uh, fuel economy and greenhouse gas emissions. And this is actually um, leading to undue burden to the automaker, to consumers, and to the environment. In terms of the automaker, it, um, the materials that they need to use to get the uh, light weighting that the government's demanding is uh, leading to higher material costs and higher investments. And that's investments in their, their body shops and um, investments in complicated scrap sorting systems and, and other things. In terms of the consumer, those prices get passed along to the consumer. So now the consumer is paying more for a vehicle, they're paying more for insurance and repair, and the amount that they're paying uh, additional for a vehicle is on average $1,000 or more. And what they're saving in fuel costs is only about $10 to $20 a year. So they never recoup that cost in the lifetime of the vehicle. Well, sure, Jason. And first, I want to thank you for giving me the opportunity again to interact with you and the folks at ICAR. Uh, we've, as you said, we've had a long, multi-year relationship. It's been, I think, very helpful, very inform informational for our industry. And I hope we've been able, in some way, to help your industry prosper, move more into the advanced materials. So, it's been a good relationship, and I look forward to more of those in the future. Those more opportunities. My background is I started with uh, General Motors. I was in General Motors for quite a while. And then I've been in a couple of different aluminum companies. Um, and I'm now the technical chairman of the Aluminum Association Technical Committee. And so I've been quite active in lightweighting automobiles for my entire career, which has been long and, and quite, quite good. And uh, I have to say that I got into aluminum about 25 years ago out of automobile industry and into aluminum. And it's been a very aggressively growing area ever since. So uh, it's been just a wonderful ride. Yeah. That's who I am. Great. Well, there's no question that the proliferation of advanced and complex materials will continue to evolve. Um, what excites you, excites you most about this trend? And what are some of the things that maybe kind of keep you up at night? Oh, my goodness. Well, the thing that excites me and has excited me for most of my career is the advancement of technologies to make better cars. It's, it's been continuous. Uh, cars have gotten safer and more comfortable and better handling and better braking, improved riding and handling. And a lot of the, the 
that, that has come from the advancement of new materials or advanced materials. And so it's been, it's been a wonderful experience as an engineer participating in, in this accelerated improvement in technology. I mean, the steel and aluminum and other materials, they've been improving for a hundred years on a pace that has been accelerating aggressively since about 1975. All of the materials are, and, and the result is better cars, better, safer, easier to drive, better fuel economy, lower emissions. That's just really fun. Sure. And I see the future continuing at an even faster pace with all the bright young engineers and, and the engineering tools that are available to these engineers now. So it's wonderful to watch.